Yep, more level editing. As I've been discovering lately, a lot of the official expansions and such that are out there tend to be for more mature rated games, so things like Doom or Duke Nukem 3D or Quake or such, whereas when you go looking into expansion content for the non-violent games, you don't tend to find a lot of official things, at least not for the games I've reviewed up to this point. So, for today's ADG mod, we're looking at how to make levels for a game which I'm surprised didn't come with level editing capabilities by default. Skyroads. When it comes down to it, Skyroads is an incredibly simple game with an incredibly simple level structure, with the presentation being what helps differentiate it and make it stand out. Now, the full release of the game originally came with 30 levels, and then there was an Xmas special with even more levels added. Though I think some of the 30 levels in the Xmas special repeat at various points, though I don't know how many do that. And the point is that with such simple levels, you'd think there'd be some kind of official ability to edit the levels or even built-in level editing functionality, but nope, no such luck. In fact, there's something very unique about the Skyroads situation. When you go looking for custom Skyroads content, you're only really going to find details on two incomplete editors for the original game, one of which I wasn't even able to find any downloads for. Yet there's a ton of clones and remakes out there, more than I could easily count. So there's clearly interest in this old game, yet why are there so many clones and barely much of anything for modding the original? Well, there is an answer to that, but I think the answer will make more sense once we've actually gone over what's involved with making levels for this thing. Firstly, the editor I'm using is called SkyEdit, and you'll note the version number when you download this is only 0.1. Yeah, to say that this editor is rough around the edges is an understatement. It can edit the levels in their entirety, but not necessarily in a fast and friendly way. There's a ton of quality of life things which could have been added with future updates, not to mention the controls are very unusual and tricky to work with. Plus, the saving process has been overcomplicated and can glitch out and hang the editor if you're nearing the limits of what the game allows. Suffice to say, be prepared for some frustration when you first get started with this thing. Now, before you start making your own levels, it is extremely important to back up your roads.lzs file. This file is what contains all the level data, and there's no way to load different ones from within the game. So the only way to make your own levels is to either alter the existing level data or make a new roads.lzs file from scratch. Now given that the editor has no way to delete or clear entire levels, I actually recommend simply renaming the original roads.lzs file to something like roads.back so that when you load the editor you have a clean slate to work from. Now I didn't do this, starting with all the original level data intact, and ended up faced with some pros and cons as a result of that, which I'll address as they become pertinent. The levels themselves are actually fairly straightforward, with each level being 7 tiles wide and then as many tiles long as you want, with the level completion state being triggered if you're safely inside a tunnel on the very last row. Now each level has 16 tile colors you can use for the main flooring, with color 0 appropriately being an empty tile. Though you also have to keep in mind that 5 of the tile colors have special functionality. Dark green slows you down, light green speeds you up, light blue restores your fuel and oxygen, dark gray is slippery, and light red kills on contact. Now, while the editor doesn't really indicate when you're using the special colors, they're really easy to remember because they all look and conform to the EGA palette index values, despite the fact that this is a VGA game. Dark green is 2, light green is 10, light blue is 9, dark gray 8, and light red 12. All other colors act as plain floors. Each tile also has two other settings, an obstacle type and an obstacle surface color. Now, obstacles can either be absent or can be pipes, half-height blocks, half-height blocks with tunnels, full-height blocks, or full-height blocks with tunnels. Now, For the blocks, you can also set a separate surface color to go on top, or can stick with the default obstacle color. Now, this doesn't change the color of the rest of the block, just the color on the top of the block. And yes, this will produce the same special color effect as well. Though another reason why you might change the surface color of obstacles is to help distinguish any height differences, as if you have half height and full height blocks next to each other, they can end up blending together extremely well. Now you can't actually change the colors of obstacles on the fly, but there is a palette editor, which is how you would change the other colors too, such as those of the tiles which don't have any special effects. However, again, owing to this being an early version of the editor, palette editing is cumbersome at best and pretty tedious, so I decided to just stick with whatever colors were already defined for the levels I was editing. Which was the one benefit to starting with the original level data, as it also had all of the various level palettes predefined, whereas if you start from scratch, you'll get a generic palette applied by default to every level. 
As you're making your level, you're also going to want to keep the three meta values in mind which every level has. Gravity, oxygen, and fuel. Now the gravity mechanic determines how high and how fast your jumps are, with lower gravity equating to slower jumps which shoot you higher and can thus travel more distance. Though if you set the gravity to the highest value the game normally has, you can't even jump at all. Fuel is measured by distance traveled, so 50 units of fuel can get you 50 tiles ahead before you run out. Also keep in mind that you start on row 3, not on row 0. Now, oxygen is measured in seconds, so 60 units of oxygen is exactly 1 minute worth. Generally speaking, if you don't intend to make refueling or restoring oxygen pertinent in your level design, you don't have to worry too much about these values, just as long as the level can be completed within them. However, if you want your level to require hitting one or more resupply tiles, you have to consider which stat you want the player to be worrying about. Now, because fuel usage is strictly based on distance, restricting fuel is the best way to force the player to take resupply routes or to plan when to go for them accordingly. Whereas, since oxygen is based on time, restricting oxygen is a good way to force faster play by tweaking your design so that if you go too slow, you just barely won't make it to the end. Gravity is a huge factor in the design though, since it ultimately affects how far you can jump. With a default gravity rating of 8, which translates in-game as 500 gravity units, you can typically cross a gap of one tile without issue, and two if you're going relatively fast, and three if you're going at maximum speed. Now it's also technically possible to get on top of a full height block from the main surface, but the timing required is extremely precise, so you should instead have half height blocks set up as a step to assist in getting on top of the full height blocks. Now there's a few other important considerations too. For instance, the leftmost and rightmost columns are impossible to see properly if you have blocks beside them. Thus, when you're designing your level, you have to keep in mind that if you do something to the player which isn't obviously a trap, they're going to feel like they're doing something wrong in their attempts to overcome an obstacle, especially if there doesn't seem to be an alternate route to use to survive. Unfortunately, it's easy to test things out, though the saving process is a bit of a mess. Well, firstly, the key combo to save the current level is left shift and F5. It has to be left shift. Right shift does not work. Now once you hit this, you'll note the save message indicates that this has only been saved in memory. Nothing's actually been written to disk yet. When you're ready to write to disk, you hit left shift and F8, and this will save all contents of memory to disk, or rather, will attempt to. If you started with a blank slate by renaming or deleting the original data file, then you won't run into any issues here right away. But if you didn't, and you go to write to disk, you're going to get an error indicating that you exceeded the maximum file size. Which is going to sound extremely odd at first, since how could that even be an issue with the original level data? Well, those LZS files are actually compressed. The compression used is a form of LZSS that's been tweaked specifically for this game. So not only is it somewhat proprietary, it also happens to operate on both bits and bytes within the same data space, meaning bytes frequently end up being made up of 8 bits which are shared between two different bytes, and while the algorithm itself isn't too complicated, actually producing a compressor that can properly utilize it to produce well-compressed results is. SkyEdit here instead takes advantage of how you can write uncompressed data into the file by adding two bits before each byte. Now this results in a file which is much larger than the original data, and ultimately hits the 64 kilobyte limit Skyroads has for loading in the level data. So yeah, if you decide to keep the original levels intact, you can't actually produce a working roads file right off the bat with SkyEdit. You instead have to manually go through and delete entire levels to get the file size down. And again, there's no function to clear an entire level, and the control combo to delete a single row, left shift plus delete, has no repeat to it so you have to tap it repeatedly to get it to remove all the rows in a level. And even after you do this to several levels, you still have to be careful since if you're right at the edge of that 64 kilobyte limit, you may hang the editor when you go to save, and then everything you did since your last proper save to disk will be lost. But in the end, you'll have proper levels which are easy enough to share. Though it's a good idea to remind people to back up their original levels anyways, even if the game has been freeware for many years now. I actually made a total of six levels while getting this video together, but I'm only going to be showing footage from three of them. There'll be a link in the video description so that you can download the levels that I created, plus you'll also find links to modding information for the game. As one aspect I didn't touch on are the background images, because yes, you can edit those too, though with some interesting limitations. 
And I was tempted to make my own editor for this game, seeing as how obtuse sky edit can be to use, but when I saw how complex the compression was, I realized I wouldn't be doing myself any favors in the attempt. While sky edit can be a pain, it does work, which is the important part. Now, I was typically keeping two windows open at a time while working with it, one with the controls list, and another to remind me which colors were special, though I had those memorized very quickly once I realized they matched up with EGA palette values. I do also have a couple more tips for anyone who wants to give Skyroads editing a shot. My first is to test frequently. One of the interesting quirks with how Skyroads works causes it to reload the level data every single time you start a level. So by keeping the game running in one window and sky edit another, you can test your level immediately, identify problem areas, tinker with them, save the changes, then immediately just reload the level in Skyroads itself and your changes will already be loaded in. Another good tip, which actually applies to a lot of games, not just this one, is to avoid jank. When it comes to game design, jankiness is where a particular aspect is not consistent, and thus each time you deal with that aspect, even if you yourself are consistent, the results are not. The Skyroads lacks RNG of any kind, so if you consistently pull off a certain move, but you die sometimes and live other times, that's jank, and that needs to be removed, because jank is not even remotely fun. Making a level hard is one thing, but if it's seemingly killing the player for no good reason, it needs tweaking. My last tip is to wait until you're done with your basic layout to get fancy. Now getting the layout done first and making sure it all flows and works is the first step, but once you have that step finished, that's when you start adding flair, like different tile colors, obstacles in arbitrary places, etc. But burning tiles, tiles that are too far to jump to, and obstacles can all be used to add a decorative aspect to a level, and are also kind of necessary to have when you have a long straight section so that the player still maintains their sense of speed the whole way down, instead of losing that sense of speed once all the obstacles have cleared the screen. But yeah, that's all there is to editing levels in Skyroads. If not for the compression format, there would be all kinds of editors for this game out there, given the simplicity of the level format. And it also explains why there's so many clones by comparison. And in some ways it's actually easier to clone the gameplay with a modern engine than to try and make new levels or an editor for this one. Plus, that gives you more options too for more kinds of tiles and obstacles. Now, normally, I would recommend a modern take on the game, though I haven't played any of them, and quite frankly, you're going to be tripping over a half dozen in the first few minutes of searching for one. So I say, if you'd rather play a modern incarnation, just search for Skyroads clones and see what you end up with. So that concludes this episode of ADG Mod. Next up will be a proper Ancient DOS Games review, episode 273, and I'll be taking a look at a game I've been holding off on because of the ridiculousness which has been the year of 2020. But it was gifted to me right before everything started going nuts, and I think we're at a point now where it's blatantly obvious which parts of the world are taking things seriously and which aren't, so... I think we're okay to take a look at this particular game now, so be sure to tune in next Saturday to see what I've got in store. Thanks for watching, everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small set of you guys.